minus 5. So that's all not on the screen, so <laughs> sorry about that. I thought I had clicked it, but obviously not. All right. And now you see what I see. Okay. All right, so y is greater than negative 2x minus 5. That's already in slope-intercept form, right? Y is by itself. We know that the y-intercept of that inequality is going to be where? Negative 5, and then the slope is negative 2. So that's going to go down and to the right, or y'all's direction, down and to the right is the direction that that line should go. The second inequality in this system is y is less than or equal to x plus 3. Is that already in slope-intercept form? Yeah, that's good. That's a good thing for it to be. Slope-intercept form, that's going to help us. So I'm going to graph those because they're already in the correct form. So if you step toward the plane, If they're not in that form, we're just going to get y by itself. Just like we did yesterday. Nothing's different about that part. Now, when we start to graph the first one, I'm going to graph it with, uh, with red ink here, just so if we talk about the red one, we're talking about the top one. If we talk about the blue one, we're talking about the bottom one. Okay? Y'all said the y-intercept for that would be negative 5. So I'm going to go down to negative 5. Put my nice big red dot. And then the slope is negative 2. So how do I count that slope again? Yeah, down 2 over which way? Right 1. So down 2, right 1. I could do that again if I wanted to. I could even go up to left 1, and it's the same negative 2 slope. Now here's where the difference comes in in what we did yesterday and today. The difference is that we have an inequality. And based on that inequality, it changes what kind of line we might have. It's still going to be a straight line, but because this doesn't have an equal to mark, what do we know about that line? It, it's not included in the answers, right? So to show not included when we graph a line, we're going to make it dotted. Okay. So if you want to draw it solid and then use the eraser to make it dotted, whatever you need to do there to get a dotted line. What you want to get out of that. Okay. Anybody else need one? Did you get one? All right. Now, we're not done with that line yet. Now we've got to do some shading for that because it's, this says all the y values that are greater than these. Okay? So we need, we need to find out which side of this line to shade. It says it's going to be this side or this side. And the way that I teach that is I use a test point. You have me for algebra 1? This is exactly what we did in, that, in chapter 7 of that uh, particular uh, course. So a test point just means pick an ordered pair that's on one side or the other. We only have to test one. So when I look at this, this line goes through here. So I just need to pick either a point from over here or a point from over here. One, one. one, one would be easy. What would be even easier? Zero, zero. Zero, zero. I can use zero, zero because the line doesn't go through it. Remember, if it goes through the origin, you can't use that, that point. So we're going to try to use zero, zero if at all possible because that's real easy math. So we look at that, our test point is, I'm going to mark my test point here at 0, 0, just so we can have some reference as to where that's at. If I plug a 0 in for y and a 0 in for x, I end up is, with 0 is greater than negative 5. Is that true? Yes. So the side our test point was on was true. That's this side. We always shade the true side. Okay? Always shade the true side. So the side my test point on was true for this problem. I'm going to shade that side. So you can shade lightly with your pencil. I'm going to use a highlighter here just because it, it makes uh, 
makes it more fun for me. So I'm, I'm just highlighting all these points that are to the top side of that, including my test point that I use, zero, zero. Okay. You don't have to mark your test point. Technically, it's not part of the graph. I just do that so that we can see, okay, test point's over here. That means this side is where we're testing. Okay. Now I'm finished graphing the first one. Let's go graph the second one. I'm going to do it in blue. What's the y-intercept for the second one? Three. So I'm going to go to three. Put me a blue dot. Slope. Up one over one. Okay. Now, got an equal to mark on that. So what do we think the line is going to be? It's going to be a solid line. That's right. I could go down one, left one if I want to get real precise with this. And I, I kind of do. Just because I like to be... Or I used to until I got married, and then you just realize you're not anymore. Oh, that's a joke. I'm just kidding. That's not how it is. Well, I didn't know where you was going with that. <laughs> that's one. a joke. I'm just kidding. That's not the way it goes. All right, now, so we need to shade this one, okay? So we got a dotted line and we got a solid line. We just got to make sure those are the correct way. And now we need to shade one side or the other of the blue line. Okay, can I use zero, zero as test point again? No. Yeah, I can because I'm only looking at the blue line right now. Yeah. And that blue line does not touch that point. So it's on one side of it. So I'm going to test this side and plug that in, zero less than three. Is that true? No. Zero is not less than three? Yes. Yeah, zero is less than three. Okay, so this side is true. So I'm going to shade the, what would, I guess would say the bottom half of the blue line. The bottom half of the plane. So I'm going to shade that with a blue highlighter. So what you're doing with your pencil is you're looking for where's the darkest region at. The answers are in what part? The mix up part. The green part for me. Yellow and blue make green. Is there anybody that's colorblind in here? Because that makes a difference. If you can't see the colors, I'm wasting my time. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Blue is yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens. And some people are only blind to certain colors, like they can't distinguish between shades of red or shades of blue or something like that. That, that happens as well. Kind of an anomaly with some of the, the cones in the back of your eye. It's amazing stuff. My wife was a pre optometry major before she went to school to teacher, so it's. She gets all nerdy about that stuff. It's really fun. All right, so answers are here. This is what's called the solution area. That means every ordered pair that's in this green area is an answer to that system of inequalities. So we're not finding one particular. Oh, okay. Well, we're having fun. We'll just shut you off. Yep. Well, that's not nice. All right. I'm probably, he probably does. All right, so let's look at another one. Let's, uh, let's start with this one. 2x plus 3y is less than 6. And then the second one is y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4. Okay, so 2 inequalities of the linear variety here. So there's their are lines, just like the systems of equations were linear yesterday. So we're dealing with linear inequalities. Okay, so uh, the first one, is it ready to graph? No. We gotta get what by itself? Y, so I'm gonna subtract two X. That's gonna give us three Y is less than negative two X plus six. And then what? Divide everybody by 3. And that's going to give us y is less than negative 2 thirds x plus 2. Now it's in slope intercept form. And we're lucky the second one's already there. So we don't have to do any work to it. Okay, so I'm going to do the second one in blue. First one is in red. Okay, so I'm going to draw my coordinate plane. Uh, kind of while we're here, what's the only real 
kickback when you solve an inequality? What happens that changes the inequality? Dividing by negative also, if you, one other operation flips it. Division is the same thing as multiplication by the reciprocal. So multiplication and division by a negative both flip that symbol back and forth. Remember that from solving just regular old inequalities back in the day. And I mean back in seventh grade. And then what about ninth grade? And what about tenth grade? What about yesterday? Well, today. How about that? Okay, so let's graph the first one. What's the y intercept for the red one? Two. Yeah, so I'm, I'm graphing that first one that I did all the work for first because it's first. And then the slope is negative two over three. Yeah, down two, right three. I could go up two, left three if I want to. What kind of line do we have? Dotted or solid? Good. Dotted because we don't have an equal to mark. All right, so... Draw that thing. What do we know about these two lines already? They're parallel to each other. Does that necessarily mean that there's no solution with inequalities? No. With equations, yeah, we already know that there's no solution to those. With inequalities, we've still got to go through the work of graphing them. So, so be careful of that. Don't just automatically assume that there's no solution. The graph that you draw me is the answer whether there's overlap or not. That's what I'm looking for, okay? Now, uh, shading, can I test zero, zero for the red one? Yeah, the line doesn't go through it. So I'm gonna use that easy math trick there. So I'm looking at zero is less than two. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna shade the side that zero's on. Zero is less than two. I'm going to shade the bottom side. So I'll, I'll do it without the highlighter this time. I'll just kind of do this. Okay? It is. It, you don't have to color it perfectly. My wife is that way. She would have to make it very pretty and, and no messed up spots. And she... Get a little stressed about that. All right, so here we go. Next one, y-intercept. Four. Same slope, remember, it's negative. They're, we already said that they're parallel to one another, so I'm going to go down two over three. Do that again. And then is this solid or dotted? Solid. My wife will uh, hear this on YouTube, and she'll get on to me talking about it in class. Yeah. Does it get us in there? Sometimes. I don't know. I don't think you got to worry about Coach Lambert watching my YouTube videos. Right, Coach? All right. Now, Shady, can we test zero, 0, here? Yeah, it's not going through it, so I can test it. So, is 0 greater than or equal to 4? No, it's not. So that means I can't shade the size zero zero zone. I can shade the other side. Because if this side's false, that side's got to be true. So we shade away from our test point, which was zero zero. So I'm going to shade above that. What do we notice here? All the points in between are not shaded. Yeah, there's no overlap on this one. So technically, if you were asked what are the, you know, what is a solution to this? You couldn't say any. You'd have to say it's, there are no solutions. But here's what I want from you. I want that graph, that whole graph showing me there's no solutions and this is why. Because the graph does this. That's what I want from you. Okay? All right. Not too bad. Pretty easy. Let's go to example C. Let's say we have X is greater than or equal to 5. And then y is uh, less than negative 3. Real, real easy one, but we always forget how to do this. 
This is the one everybody always comes up to. X and the number looks like what? Y and the number looks like what? What does X equals five, what kind of line is that? Straight. True. Horizontal. horizontal. X in the number is horizontal. Is that right? Sure, I think. Don't do this to me. No. I'm asking. It's not. It's not. Oh, okay. Because remember, the X axis is, is already horizontal, so the line can't be. So if you remember, X axis does this. So if it's X in a number, it's going to be vertical. That's the way that's got to go, okay? So that it'll cut through the x-axis. Remember, chopping up x, this is the only variable we got. Okay? And then y and a number, that's your horizontal lines. Okay? Y and just a number, that's your horizontal line. Because you've got just a y-intercept there. That's what you've got if you think about it in slope-intercept form. That's just a y-intercept with no slope. No slope is flat. Positive slope up and to the right. Negative slope down and to the right. That's what those look like. So let's get this graphed. I'm not going to draw a very big coordinate plane here, just big enough that I know I can fit everything on. So I'm going to graph this first one in red. Uh, how do I graph x is greater than or equal to 5? Where do I go? 5 on what? The x-axis, because I'm chopping up the x-axis. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, what kind of line do I have? Solid, why? Because it's equal to. So straight up and down, solid line. Now, shading. We could do a test point. We could use the, the origin, 0, 0. If I plug that in, there's not a place to put the y, so we just plug 0 in for x. Is 0 greater than 5? No. So I'm going to go which direction? The other side. Yeah, go to the right. And if you think about with these, you can kind of think, oh, it's greater than 5, so that's going to be all these numbers this direction that are greater than 5. So, you know, you can take that little shortcut when it's just y or x in a number. So, shading. All right. I'm going to go back to my highlighters because it covers up too many points for me. I just can't. I can't do it. The shading, it, it like covers up the grid lines and it bugs me. The highlighter, I can still see the grid lines through it. A little bit, yeah, I've always been that way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm that way too. Part of being a math teacher, you have to be, I think. It's a rule. Have you ever used this in your everyday life besides coming to school? Like just at Kroger or something? <laughs> no, not this at Kroger, definitely not. No, not at Kroger for this. Gas uh, station. Not at the gas station. There are some applications for this, like in the business world. If you like went into business, uh, you could you could look at some things and sales. Yeah, yeah. There are some applications, and we'll get to some word problems and look at see how, how could you use this. But you're not going to use this at Kroger or Kroger's. Kroger's, as my grandparents would say. Yes, ma'am. Has anyone seen a meme online where it's like? Oh, stop, stop! You're getting that. Getting. All right, so let's grab this next one. Y is less than negative 3. So where do I go? I got to go to negative 3 first. You're ahead of us. Advanced. All right. Is that right? Did I do that correctly? Yes. What did I do wrong, Jordan? And it should be dotted. The undo mark. Your button there or an eraser would be handy. There we go. Dotted line. And now is zero less than negative three? No. No, zero is not less than negative three. These numbers down here would be less than negative three. So I'm going to shade below that line. And the overlaps there is this little area that makes that corner. That this is this would be your solution area where it's green. So we're about to put the absolute value stuff into it. So it doesn't get if you can do absolute value graphs, it doesn't get harder. Uh, shading still there, dotted solid still there, but just put an absolute value graphs in. It. Okay. All right. Let's look at one like that then. 
McKenna said, it's getting too easy. Can, does it get harder? Yeah, let's make it harder. Because we're in algebra 2, not 7th grade math. So we got y, we'll, we'll start with an easy one. We'll say y is less than or equal to 3. Something like, well, you know how to do that, right? And then let's make the second one hard. y is greater than absolute value of x plus 4 uh, minus 2. You do? Okay. Go for it. We're going to work it together. And we'll do one. All right. So, coordinate plane. Those are already in the form that I need them in to graph. So, I don't have to do any work to get them there. So, I'm going to graph that first one because it's the easiest one. I'm going to do that first. Uh, so, y is less than or equal to 3 is going to be what kind of line and where? Vertical, horizontal, horizontal line at three, three on the, the y-axis, because that's what the letter we got there. So go up here, three, dotted or solid? Uh, solid? Solid, got equal to marks, so it's got to be solid. And it says it's graphing the y's that are less than that. Is that above or below that line? Below. The less than's but down, right? So I'm going to graph below that line. Shade all that. Now I've always had students who had two different color highlighters and they, they could do this on paper if it's the right color highlighters. Some of them won't mix well. Like orange and pink don't really do good, good together. They don't they're not far enough apart in color spectrum. If you've got a blue one and a yellow one, it will mix and make green when you highlight over it. Black and white highlighters? I've never seen those. It's called Sharpies, right? Sharpies and white out. Uh, all right, so let's graph the, the absolute value one. So this is the, the more difficult one because it's an absolute value graph. So we know what kind of shape should this make. It should be a V-shape. Even though it's in inequality, it doesn't change the nature of it, okay? It's kind of like teenagers. You guys are teenagers at Idaho High School. They got them over at McNary too. There ain't much difference. Until we step on the football field. And there's a little bit different. All right, so now, what's the, what's the vertex of that absolute value graph? Because remember, that's, that's the important parts. Say that again. Is it 4, negative 2? Negative 4, negative 2. Remember, it's the opposite of whatever's in here. So if it's a plus sign, it's opposite, makes it negative. If this were x minus 4, it would be positive 4. The opposite of what's happening on the inside. All right. Now, which way should that open? Up. Because a is positive 1. Because it's in front, because there's nothing listed here in front of the absolute value, so it's like there's a positive one right there. All right, so we're going to go to that point, negative four, negative two. Now, I should be doing this in a different color. Negative four, one, two, three, four, negative two. It's opening up the slope in both directions is up one over one. Making that V shape. Dotted or solid? Dotted. So it's just the V shape, but dotted. Now, last thing for that absolute value graph is the shading. Okay, so your shading can happen on this side or this side. So it's like the inside of the V or the outside of the V. So we just want to pick an ordered pair that's on one side or the other. It's either on the inside or the outside. I'm looking here at zero, zero, because that's the one I've been using all day. Can I use it? Yeah, that V doesn't go through it, so I'm going to use zero, zero. And I plug it into this inequality. If I do that, 
Maybe I need to work that out. Zero plus four in the absolute value. So that would be four. The absolute value of four is four minus two. Is zero greater than two? No, that's false. So we're going to shade the inside of the V, the part that would be between my palms. Inside. These make some nice looking graphs because you get a nice little shape that all the answers are where? In that, triangle. In that little triangle there. Okay. So nothing's changing about, you know, as far as graphing a line, graphing an absolute value graph. That's not changing. The shading and the dotted are solid is the only part that's changed. Everything else is the same. So we're building up here skill set. Things we know how to do already, and then putting something else in the place of it. Let's look at another one that involves absolute value stuff. Okay. Example E. Well, I hope you, 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 you latch onto this and then you're doing okay with it before that. Okay. All right, so let's say we got Y is greater than or equal to negative 2 absolute value of X minus 3 plus 4. And then Y is less than negative one-fourth X. That's all. Okay. That's, that's the system. That's all that you get for the second inequality. What happens if you get more than two of them? You just keep graphing them on the same coordinate plane. And the overlap just gets probably a little smaller and smaller area on it. It's what happens, really. Nothing really life-changing. All right. So let's graph this first one, the absolute value one. That's a tough one. Because what do we know about the vertex of that thing? It is 3, 4. 3, 4. So I'm going to go to 3, 4. You all agree with Cagle? I hope you do because he's right. Good job. Positive three, positive four. Which way is this thing open? Down. down. Why? Negative four. Got the negative A in front of the absolute value. So we know it opens down. It's a V shape. The slope is negative two. So that means we're going to go down two over one to the right and then down two over one to the left from that vertex. And that's going to get us our V shape. Should this be solid or dotted? Why? Equal to makes it solid. Now for that problem, can I check zero, zero? Yeah. yeah, the line doesn't go through it. So I can use zero, zero as my test point. Okay, so on that, just kind of recapping what we did here. The vertex was three, four, so that's this point up here. And then my, I know it's pointing down, so I know when I count that two, I'm going down two over one. The other direction, down two, left one. Okay, that, that's how that's happening. And then I'm checking zero, zero. So I plug a zero in there. Maybe I need over here on scratch paper work that out. Zero is greater than or equal to negative two times zero minus three in absolute value plus four. So that's going to be negative two times three. Is zero greater than or equal to negative two? Yes. So am I going to shade the inside of that V or the outside? The outside, the part that how is, zero. How is zero uh, equal to negative two? It's not equal to, it's greater than it. It's got an equal to sign under there, though. Yeah, but it's one or the other. It's either greater than or it's equal to. This one happens to be greater than, so that means it's true. So I'm going to go on the outside of the V, so the part that my, the outside of my hands, the back of my hands make. 
Okay, so a lot of shading on this one. It goes all around this V here. Mr. K has been a busy man today. I don't understand. Why would you do this? It's pointless. She said something about me, or I heard that they said. Oh yeah, that's the best one. I love that. All right, now let's get the second one. So I just shaded. You know, show me that that's shading on the outside there. Okay. Now I'm gonna graph this. So what's the y-intercept for that one? Zero. Zero. Okay. So that's gonna mess me up when I go to test, but that's okay. Because the, the line goes through the origin, so I can't test 0, 0 on this particular problem. I want to pick a different point. So then, how do I count that slope? Up one, when you say over, which direction, left or right? If you go down, you're going to go right. If you go up, you would go left, all right? Down one, over four, or up one, left four. Okay. So, I'm counting the slope. Mx plus b. Down one, over four. And then my y intercept was zero because there's nothing out here. Okay. Dotted or solid? Dotted. So obviously we're going to have some answers no matter which side of that line I shade. I'm going to see some overlap happening. Now, here's where you've got to pick a different point to test. Because the line goes through 0, 0. If you tested it, you don't know which side to go for because it's right in the middle. Okay? Fence straddlers is what uh, the old folks in the church used to call that. Don't be straddling the fence. That sort of thing. you got to go with God or against it. So, uh, no straddling the fence. So we're going to pick a different point. It doesn't matter which one you pick. Pick one. I'm going to pick an easy one. One, one. one, one would be really easy because then I can't screw up where I put the ones, right? That's a good thing to do. Okay? So I'm going to use one, one. So one is less than negative one fourth times one. Is one less than negative one fourth? No. So that means I'm going to shade. Top side or bottom side? Bottom side. Because it was false. Yeah, there's that empty spot there. The solutions are here and here. This area is just blue, not a solution. All the overlap is where the solutions are. Okay. Solution areas. are in this, these spots, okay? Solution areas, Those, that's where they're at. Two in this spot because it's separated by that absolute value graph. So you say there's this area and that area. If you were asked to point to them, tell me where they're at. All right, questions about those? Not too bad, I think maybe we feel a little bit better about absolute value graphs after that. Whether we did great on the quiz or not, maybe we feel better about them now. You, you, or maybe you feel like, oh, well, I did do that right on the quiz. Well, way to go, me. Pat on back. Okay? All right. Now, so this is what I want you to do today. Get, get you started. You got about 20 minutes left in class. So this will get you going. You can get some practice with this tomorrow. Uh, and then quiz on Friday. So page 171. Numbers... Five through twenty five odd. Okay. Yeah, they in the back of these books. Yeah, the graphs are, are in the back. Yeah. I'll show you where and I they only shade the solution area in the back of the book. So when you look for that, you're only gonna see the shading of the solution area. If there is one. Okay. When you get down to number seventeen, 
They're giving you three inequalities at a time. Graph all three of them on the same coordinate plane and just look for where they're all overla overlapping. Do you have to draw solution No, you don't have to. Okay. Yeah, I should be able to see the darkest part of your graph okay. is where your answers are. That, that should be what's going on there. Keep telling yourself that. Uh, okay.